There we go. And, um, well, don't worry, I've not forgotten your extra toast. Is everything okay? Morning, my fellow inmates. <sighs> You're undone. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> and what uh, ambrosial delights await to tempt my rabbit palate today? Excuse me. You know the rules. The rules, indeed. Whatever happened to an Englishman's home being his castle? This is not your home. I'm not an Englishman. Not there. There. I can't even sit where I want now. Oh, wait, where's Claudia? Ah, speak of the angel. Enjoy. What a feast. Or oh, the gods themselves would descend from Mount Olympus just to have a bite of your succulent sausage. Can you take over in the kitchen, please? I'll see to the guests. What for? Um, the grill's playing up again. Can you have another look at it? My pleasure. Uh, oh, pardon. Hey. Hey. Welcome back to the land of the living. How are you feeling? <clears throat> I've had better days. Can you remember what happened? <sighs> Some of it. Sadie's face. And the rope getting tighter. Pain. Lots of pain. And then I can breathe. Then nothing. Why am I still alive? Greg saved you. He gave you mouth to mouth. You were there. How'd you find me? Ah, uh, oh, no, well, you have Rico, the bloodhound, to thank for that. Some bloodhound. I got us lost, nearly. <laughs> anyway, we'll fill you in later. The main thing now is for you to get some rest, huh? That's all I've been doing for two days. Come on, tell me everything. Sadie, Lanta. Don't know, um, she disappeared long before the ambulance arrived. Look, you don't need to worry about Sadie, OK? The police are out there searching for her. With any luck, they've picked her up by now. Please. Sadie, Sadie, Sadie. I should have listened to you two guys in the first place. Sorry if I gave you a hard time. No, oh, don't worry about it. Honestly, you weren't telling your girlfriend was a psycho. Sorry. Yeah. I loved her so completely, and I, I thought she felt the same way. That's the worst of it, the betrayal. I should be hating her right now. Go ahead. No one's going to blame you. I can't. Despite of all that's happened. How screwed up is that? I, uh, is this a good time? Yeah, um, we'll leave you to it. Well, thank you. Why did you send me into the kitchen? There's nothing wrong with that grill and you know it. No, I don't. I'm not a handyman. You don't like me serving the breakfast, do you? It's not me. Some of the guests. There have been complaints. About mm. what? No. Oh. I try to be careful. I wipe my hands before touching any of the plates. I know you do, but put yourself in their shoes. You can sometimes look a bit off-putting. Off-putting? Me? Oh, right. Oh, so it's all my fault. I'm the reason why the bookings have dropped off recently. That's not what I'm saying. Well, I'm glad to hear it, because we both know who's been scaring the guests away. Not again. He's been here for six weeks. He hardly ever washes. Hardly ever changes his clothes. An open sewer would smell more fragrant. Oh, he's not that bad. No, he's much worse, and he doesn't seem to have a job, as far as I can tell. I don't know what he's doing for money. Well, it's not our concern. It is our concern, when it affects our livelihood. Things aren't going to improve around here until Dan goes. You've got to tell him to go. Don't start telling me how to run my own business. Oh, right. yeah, your business. When's it going to become our business? When are you going to let me into your life properly? As your husband, when? Enough! Why can't you be more patient? Meaning, why can't I be more like your ex-husband? Oh, forgive me, forgive me, oh, great paragon. In my opinion, Sadie Vaughan's a highly dangerous individual. But we know she wrote those letters to you. We have a fingerprint match. The assault on you was obviously the culmination of a premeditated and sustained campaign. I understand what you're saying. But looking back, 
I think it's possible she was unbalanced by grief. <laughs> Not everybody who grieves goes around committing major offences. I'm just saying. Look, Dr West, the police are involved now. This is a serious incident. For all we know, Sadie may go around hurting somebody else. No. Or have you considered the possibility that she may go after you again in the future? And if she does, maybe you won't be so lucky the next time. Oh, get out here. I'm Kieran Hartley. I've got an appointment with Dr Clay. Oh, yeah, just uh, take a seat for me, Mr Hartley. Thanks. This is unbelievable. Oh, Nick. How's he doing? He's got a few bruised ribs and a pretty sore head, but I don't think that's the real damage that Sadie inflicted. I didn't know the woman at all well. She always came across as well, nice. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? You never can tell what's going on inside someone's head. It's a miracle you got to Nick on time. I think you and Rico deserve a medal. <laughs> yeah, here, here. Do you think we should go and see him or send some flowers or something? Yeah. Oh, no, I'd leave him be for the time being. Hey, I'm back. Did you miss me? Anything exciting be going on in my absence, or is it the usual humdrum routine? So, how's the treatment coming on? Not to see for yourself. Uh, I prescribed Driclor. Uh, have you been using it every day? Yeah, all the time. No effect. If anything, the sweating's getting worse. Okay. Well, if your condition's not responding to the antiperspirant, I could prescribe propanthaline, and they can sometimes be side effects. What kind of side effects? Sometimes a patient can experience a uh, dry mouth, blurred vision. Although the sensations can be quite minor. Okay. What about the option of surgery? Well, it seems a very drastic step. You don't know what it's like living with it. You know, imagine reading a newspaper and it turns soggy on you. I'm like a one-man monsoon. I can see the way people look at me. Well, perhaps you could reduce the symptoms if we could work out what triggers the excessive sweating. Oh, I know what's triggering it, all right? Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can give you two good reasons. Claudia and the Paragon. Claudia and I have been engaged for over two years now. Every time I bring up the subject marriage, she trots out the same excuse. We're not ready. Correction, she's not ready. Well, why does she say that? She was married once. Five years ago, her husband died in some sort of road accident. And the way she goes on about him, you know, he's so wonderful, so caring, so this, so that. Paragon, that's her favourite word for him. And of course, I don't measure up. Kieran. And of course, you know what? She's got this kind of um, shrine thing going in the living room with all these old cooking trophies and stuff. I mean, talk about obsessed. And you feel that this is causing you anxiety? I read this article, the hyperhidrosis vicious circle. Stress leads to sweating, which leads to more stress, etc., etc. Yeah, stress can certainly increase the symptoms, but um, hyperhidrosis isn't just a psychological problem. I know. I'm fed up with it. Let's nuke the problem. I want surgery. Sorry. Um, well, I, I can recommend that you can see a consultant, but in the meantime, I think you should go home and think very seriously about the implications of surgery. OK. But I doubt I'll change my mind. What do you want? This room is out of bounds to guests. Oh. Am I naughty? <laughs> please, please, don't tell on me. Stop waving that thing in my face. Oh, so sorry. I, I keep having to remind myself how particular you are these days. As you're very well aware, this is a non-smoking establishment. Mm. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> Mementos. How quaint. Do you mind? Oh, don't worry. I wouldn't dream of, of sullying the memory of your dear. Dear departed husband. What do you want? Well, I find myself embarrassingly out of pocket. So once again, I have to prevail upon your um, generosity. So you can get yourself even more drunk. That would be the general idea. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, you know fun. Oh, you're not amusing, Dan. Look at you. Look at what you've become. Why don't you stop drinking? It would be hard, but you could, you know. Oh, like get it off so... your soapbox, Claudia. It really doesn't suit you. I'm not giving you any more money. Oh, really? Uh, well, pity. I, I wonder what um, Kieran would think if, if I told him what your late and, oh, so lamented husband was really like. Mm -hmm. And what would he think if he knew that you'd killed him? Oh, 
No need to be so miserly. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I have a feeling <laughs> if your husband was here, he'd be smiling down at you. <laughs> Doing? What does it look like? Who gave you permission to go through the accounts ledger? It's confidential information. Yeah, I could see why. It makes very interesting reading. I'll take that. Oh, go ahead. You'll find there's no entry next to Dan's name. Dan's circumstances are exceptional. Yeah, that's for sure. Because your sudden charitable policy doesn't just end with free accommodation, does it? What do you mean? Look. Here. How dare you? Poking and prying in business is one thing, but these are my private bank statements. Yeah, and they show that you've been making cash withdrawals nearly every day for the past six weeks. I'm not having this. What? That's where he's getting his money for fags and booze, isn't it? That's enough. What is this man to you? Why are you giving him money? The subject is closed. The subject is not closed. What's going on? Tell me. Get your clammy hands off me. Tell me the truth. I want to know. He's my brother. What? That's right. I have a chronic alcoholic for a brother. Are you satisfied now? Please, you got that admission? <laughs> Farewell, old friend. Madam, well, I look at a face like yours, I think, is it any wonder I drink to excess? Carry <laughs> hey, merchandise in case you have no Hello. Hello. Come on. Now, we all know who's paid for that, don't we? I, I don't know what you mean, pal. No, you probably don't. What kind of man lives off his own sister? Sister? Claudia's spent years trying to turn this place into a going concern, and you seem hell-bent on turning it into a shambles. If you're referring to the steady migration of guests, then I'd have a look at the general decor. I'd have to frighten anyone away. You're always ready with a smart quip, aren't you? You know, when you first arrived here, I thought you were an okay kind of guy. A bit down at heel, friendly enough, funny even. And then I noticed how you treated oh. Claudia. I knew something was oh. up. Oh. Is this going anywhere? Because I'm getting bored, not to mention thirsty. Oh, you're the one who's going to be going somewhere, all right. I beg your pardon? Your days of being a parasite are over. Pack your bags. You're going now. Really? Uh, and what does Claudia think of all this? The sooner you go, the better for her. Oh, you're priceless. You really are. <laughs> if you don't go, I'll kick you out myself. Well, I'd like to see you try. What are you going to do? Hose me away with your sweat. <laughs> well, that's it. Come on. No one can <laughs> hear you. <laughs> you idiot. Stop him. Get off me. <laughs> Done? Done? Talk to me. Oh my God, what have I done? Call an ambulance. Keep your voice down. Help me get him to the sofa. He'll be fine. How do you know? He could have cracked his skull or brain damage or anything. Oh, listen to yourself. You're not a doctor. Yeah, dead right, which is why I'm going to call one. Oh, Kieran! So, if Nick does come back to work, um, what do we say to him? How are we supposed to behave? We behave as we normally do. The last thing Nick would want is to be treated with kid gloves. Ooh, give us a twirl. What? Your new coat. Your expensive-looking new coat. Only the best, pour moi. How do you afford that on a nurse's pay? That's for me to know and you to find out. Excuse me, busy day. Miss Drew. Well, she certainly seems happy enough. Well, that's retail therapy for you. Gives the punters a buzz for the first day or two. If it doesn't last. Oh, don't be such a sour puss. Shopping's great. I love it. Yeah, me too. Always puts me in a good mood. Yeah, not to mention in debt. Please, won't you reconsider? This is a respectable guest house, I assure you. Today's altercation will not be repeated. Excuse me? Uh, one moment. I'm willing to offer you a reduced rate. But thank you for your custom. Do come again. What can I do for you? 
Take it this is the guest house. It is. Single or double. En suite is extra, but well worth it. Thanks. I'm not looking to stay. I'm a doctor. Oh. Well, I think we need to get you checked out with Annie. What for? Well, you mentioned the blurred vision. It could indicate a head injury. Although, there have been other factors. How much have you had to drink today? Not nearly enough. Dan. A couple of pints. You have whiskey from the smell of it. So, you want to tell me what happened here? Uh, he tripped over and hit his head. I'm afraid these accidents are an occupational hazard. There was no accident. It was my fault. I threw Dan against the wall. But it wasn't deliberate. He didn't mean to. Well, that makes it all right, does it? Look, the fact is I've lost my temper twice today. Are violent moods a side effect of hyperhidrosis? Not at all. It's more likely that you've been put under a lot of stress. There's still no excuse. I'm sorry, Claudia. I must be a real disappointment to you. No, you're not. Why would you even think that? There's no need to put on a show for the doctor. You know I could never live up to. I honestly think the best thing is if I leave. <laughs> want you to leave. God, you get some silly notions sometimes. Uh, is it any wonder? When you put them into his head? Dan! No. It's time to put a stop to all this nonsense. Can you sit down, please? I need to finish cleaning the cut in your head. Yes, sit down. You're not well. Behold the paragon. <laughs> what? I am Claudia's deceased husband, recently resurrected. After all, isn't that what saints are supposed to do? All right, so if Danny's your husband... Was. ...was your husband, then I can sort of understand why you'd want to pretend he was dead. Thanks. What I don't understand is why you made him out to be so virtuous. Well, in those days, he was. He was kind, considerate, loving. We are talking about Dan here. Yes, and I'm still in the room. Look, when we first got married, it was me who had a drinking problem. You? At first I tried to hide it, then I got clever. Started encouraging Dan to have a few drinks with me. Why? Classic strategy. Get your partner to share your addiction makes it seem more normal. Trouble is, you succeeded far too well, my sweet. I know, and he couldn't handle it. But when he lost his job, it was a wake-up call for me. I didn't want to end up like him. Well, nice to know I was a role model, even if it was in reverse. <laughs> so I started going to AA meetings, got myself completely dry, and then I divorced him. Hang on, let me get this straight. So you turn your husband into a drunk, and then you become sober and dump him? Uh, don't blame Claudia. She had to get shot of me. A recovering alcoholic, living with a hopeless alcoholic. Come on, Kieran, think about it. Nearly finished. Oh, thanks. Well, if you were so eager to get rid of him, then, then what's the memorial for? But I never thought I would see him again. I wanted something to remember him by. The old him. Unfortunately for Claudia, I rolled back into her life about six weeks ago. I got... Kicked out of the place I was staying in obvious reasons. And I couldn't turn him away. At the same time, I was terrified he would tell you who he really was. I took my frustration out on you. This would go and with the episode of your condition. Yeah. I'm sorry I put such a strain on you. Why? Why didn't you just tell me about this in the first place? Because I was ashamed. Ashamed of what I was, ashamed of what I'd done to Dan. I still am. Perhaps if you can learn to accept yourself warts and all, you can relieve some of the tension in your relationship with Kieran. It's me that's been causing him to sweat so much, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't go that far. I'd like you to make another appointment in a few weeks' time. I wouldn't mind betting that your condition may have improved by then. My surgery? That'll be my recommendation, yep. Thanks for the offer of a lift. Very decent of you. No but worries. I uh, thought we might get rid of that before we go to the hospital. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a tip.
there if I need it. There's a special detox program run by the Primary Care Trust. I can recommend you if you're interested. That's very decent of you, Doc, but you know, I've tried going on the wagon in the past. Always seem to fall off. Weak willed. From what I've seen, you're anything but. Why don't you try believing in yourself a bit more? It's entirely up to you. Well, no promises, but I'll think about it. Uh, nah, no thanks. Ah. Uh. I don't suppose there's any point in me telling you this is really not a good idea. Yeah, you're right. There's no point. And besides, you should never trust a man who doesn't have at least one vice. It's the saintly who cause the problems in this world. I'd call someone. Then why haven't you? You're going to tell me why you're here or you're just going to stare at me? I haven't come here to harm you, Nick. Well, that's reassuring. Giving your recent track record. I'm so sorry. It was never my intention to try and kill you. You hurt me. More than physically. All I wanted was for you to experience what Kelly's last moments might have felt like. I understand your loss and your business, but did you have to take it that far? No, I regret my actions. Even now, I can't apologise for my motives. Well, maybe you shouldn't have to. I've been thinking it over and over in my head. Everything that happened. And if I'm honest with myself, I don't blame you. Yeah, in an odd kind of way, it's, it might have even help me. Helped you how? I never felt I'd been punished enough for what happened to Kelly. I could never let go of the guilt. Maybe now is the time to move on. For both of us. I don't think I am ready to do that. If you, if you can't, what sort of future do you expect? It's hard to think that he won all this lot. He must have been quite skilled at one time. Maybe he'll get back on his feet one day. Uh, let's hope so. I'd like him to stay here until he does. Oh, Dan's not going anywhere until he's paid his bill in full. He's going to work it off in the kitchen. And that's all right with you? And this is your home. Why are you asking me? Things are going to be different from now on. I'd like us to be partners. Business partners? More than that. I think we should make a fresh start. You've lied to me since we met. How can I trust you again? Well, you can start by making me your wife. It's what I want. Kieran, <laughs> I'm proposing to you. Are you sure it's me you want, and not Dan? It's you I want. Things used to be really great between us. Give them half the chance. Maybe they can get even better. Well? I know the police came to see you. What did they say? You could be up for attempted murder. What? But it wasn't like that. I told you. Well, you're going to have to speak to them. Put the record straight. It's out of my hands. You're part of an official police investigation. What am I going to do? I don't know what to, to do. You go and see them. Give yourself up. It might be better for you in the long run. What if you didn't make a complaint? Told them to drop the charges. You could do that. I see. 
I ought to call the police now. I don't think it's good for either of us, you being here. Can't we just talk about it, please? You better go. Nick. Go. Not all of it was a deception. In the beginning, I had a plan and I wanted you to pay, but then I spent time with you. And it was so confusing because you were the man who killed my sister. Please, when you're out here, maybe we can talk about this. No. I still have feelings for you. But it's too late, isn't it? A man who's injured his spine in a fall features in trauma tonight at 8.30. Next this afternoon on BBC One, Sugar and Spice, Malice and Vice in Murder, She Wrote.